Shreveport was the Confederate capital of Louisiana. For so much more than that, it would have been a great prize for the Union to seize. The river proved a lifeline for moving supplies from the west to the rest of the Confederacy. And here, 31 ironclad or tin-clad battleships were built. By 1864, there were only four targets worth taking, according to the Union High Command, in all of the South. And that's Richmond, Charleston, Mobile, and Shreveport. Shreveport was really important because it was the safest of the four. It was insulated. It was far away from everything. It was the capital of Confederate Louisiana. It was the center for the Army of the Trans-Mississippi. And New Orleans was under siege already by then. New so Orleans is was, in was Union history. hands. Yeah. It's gone, yeah. militarily. Yeah. Uh, you have industry growing up here. You have cattle moving in here. It is the breadbasket that's feeding those armies. And Napoleon said an army marches on its stomach. We found recently that part of the problem with this campaign is that Banks was using a French-based map, Porter's using a Spanish-based map. His show the roads, Banks do not. Banks' river pilot was a second licensed river pilot after Henry Shreve on the river. His name was Wellington W. Withenbury, and he leased several thousand acres of cotton land right around in here, and his cotton had been harvested and was ready to come down, and he didn't want the Yankees to steal it, and he didn't want the, the rebels to burn it. And so he tells Banks, you know, there's a very fine road heading due west, and it goes from Natchitoches, and it goes to uh, a little place that no longer exists as a viable town across the corners and then moves up what is today Highway 175 to Pleasant Hill from there to Mansfield and from there you can come into Shreveport from the southwest and the rebels will not be looking for you and he believes it. And he's right, the road exists. Porter's saying give me three days but I'll do it. the biggest ambush you've ever seen is, is down that road. Exactly. Yeah. And he meets his match at Mansfield on April 8th and then in, during the retreat, he has a tactical tie and a strategic loss because of a retreat at Pleasant Hill and comes back to Grand Accor where they pull up. Porter is fighting his way back south. He's having all kinds of problems. Uh, the Confederates are firing at him. Uh, the snipers are, are at him. His boats do not move well in reverse. Fire. Anchors are coming loose, uh, rudders are coming loose, ropes are popping off, and, and in fact, he loses his largest ship, the Eastport, trying to get south of Grand Accord. Eastport was taken out by a mine that was made in Shreveport and laid by uh, the crew, if not the boat, and maybe the boat, of an ironclad, the Missouri, that was built here. So it did get some action, although we never, we never think of it. Stories of the war and its aftermath are best illustrated by a walk along the Red. In 1873, the people of Caddo and Bossier parishes were so fed up with so-called reconstruction rule that they tried to join Texas. Reenactors visit pivotal sites of the Red River campaign every year. They come to feel what you can't put your finger on, a lonely, wanting call from the Red. You see, the red is unspoiled by this century. Things are pretty much as they were when the blues and grays fought for it. The war was over, but the ramifications of the war goes on. History follows the individual. History follows us today. And if we don't have a clear and correct understanding of that history, how will we ever know where we are going? Remember, Jefferson Davis, president of the Confederacy, warned us that if we, the South, lost the war for Southern independence, our children would be taught Southern history by the conquering Yankee. Walter Kennedy and Gary Stevens wear the uniform of the Confederate soldier for battle recreations. They want people to remember the good and honorable part of a time when men and women fought and died for their beliefs alone. To live in hearts we leave behind is not to die. Constancy is a powerful thing. There's something about the Red River. It's easy on the eyes, on the senses, on the imagination once you face a little history. Something you can't quite put your finger on lingers in its silent, absolutely relentless passage south. Lost Louisiana, rivers run deep, 
the red will continue.